Happy Friday from England. Excuse the layer of clothing. We are almost in the middle of July and it's wet and about 15 to 16 degrees outside. Nasty. This video is about why I upgraded from an NVIDIA RTX 4070 to a 4070 Ti Super. And the answer is simple. I want to play the most demanding titles at 60 FPS on a 4K screen. And I also want to play older AAA titles that might be three or four years old at at least 100 to 120 frames per second in 4K. And that's precisely what I've been able to achieve by upgrading to this card. So behind me is my PC. And this has a CPU, which is an NVIDIA, no, <laughs> NVIDIA CPU? No, it's an AMD CPU, 5800X3D, which runs really cool. I love that CPU. And I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, two SSDs in there as well, in this gorgeous fractal North case. And behind me, it's my TV, which is an LG C1 and hiding behind the PC is my Xbox Series X and a Nintendo Switch. So initially when I bought this PC, which was roughly six months ago, that was my first gaming PC in about um, 18 years or so. And I initially thought I was going to play at 1440p upscale to 4K. But what I learned is that 1440p does not scale well to 4K. It looks a bit soft and slightly blurry, pretty much how the majority of games look on the Xbox Series X. But I didn't know how soft 1440p looked until I started playing a couple of, of games in 4K. And 4K is glorious on a 4K screen. Like even the menus, you can see that the text is a lot sharper. And once you start playing games, like colors are a little bit more vivid, everything is sharp, everything just looks nicer. It, it almost feels like you've upgraded to a new TV. And from then on, I didn't want to play in 1440p. And with my 4070, I was able to play in 4K, but with the most demanding games, I was probably hovering it around 40 frames per second or 50 or 50 50 frames per second which wasn't really ideal it felt like a downgrade and this would usually be at settings that are um, high or very high basically just like the level underneath ultra with a few things dialed down like cloud details like things that I don't really look at um, without ray tracing and uh, with some older titles older AAA titles from about three or four years ago, the frame rate would probably be around 70, 80, give or take, again, without ray tracing. So basically I couldn't use ray tracing in most games, which wasn't a big deal because games like Cyberpunk that look good with ray tracing look amazing without it as well. So I didn't really feel like it was needed, but then there are a couple of titles like Spider-Man, Miles Morales, where ray tracing is really part of the experience. So I just felt like I wanted a bit more headroom. Some might have said, well, don't upgrade from the 4070 now, just wait next year for the 50 series or the 50 series is even rumored for late 2024. However, I believe that the first 50 series card will likely be the 5090 and that the 5070 will be released a lot later, like maybe late spring next year. So I didn't feel like I wanted to wait that long and those graphics cards will be available at full price and be quite expensive. And I also don't believe that the jump from the Super Series will be ridiculously high. So uh, yeah, so I felt like might as well buy something now. I did consider AMD really carefully, especially the um, 7900 XTX. The problem with that card is that most of the ones that I found were around 950 pounds. 
and that puts them too close to the 4080 in my opinion. Yes, the AMD, the XTX one has more RAM, but the NVIDIA card has a lot of AI features like DLSS and frame generation, which are ahead of their AMD equivalent. Plus there are also other AI features that could be handy from productivity, such as enhancing audio of videos that I have recorded or fixing eye contact post-production, etc. Like there are a lot of AI features that I expect to see in Windows and with third-party software that will require an NVIDIA GPU. And therefore, it didn't feel like it's worth saving 50 or maybe 80 pounds on an XTX over buying um, a 4080, which will also have much better resale value. And furthermore, NVIDIA cards seem to be a lot more efficient. For example, the XTX, that requires a power supply that has an output or capacity of 850 watts. I have a 650 watt PSU in here, and I just about got away with having a 4070 Ti Super in there without having to upgrade my power supply. Because if I needed an 851, I would have thought, okay, I'm upgrading the power supply. I might as well get one that's modular, which costs more money. But who knows, in two years, I might have a 5080 or 5090. I might as well buy a 1200 watt um, PSU now. So that meant that if I was to buy an XTX, I would have probably have to spend an additional 180 pounds on a power supply and take quite a lot of cables apart. So the step down would have been the 7900 XT. Likewise with that one, I didn't find it cheap enough in comparison to the 4070 Ti Super. Granted, I purchased my graphics card in uh, April and prices for the AMD cards have come down. Funny enough, a few days ago, I did see an offer on an XTX at around seven, uh, at around, I think under 700 pounds, brand new, which was pretty epic. But the 4070 Ti runs cooler, which is beneficial because if it runs cooler, the fans will be quieter, there'll be less heat in here. And it also means that if I ever wanted to downgrade to an ITX case, then I could have this GPU in there and there'll be less heat, which means less noise because thermals are important. They're really important because I like my PC to be relatively quiet because I play it in the lounge and I don't want it to sound like a private jet. So what about comparing the 4070 Ti Super to the 4080? In this case, I purchased my graphics card on a deal. It was around 670 pounds. The cheapest 4080 that I could find was around 950 pounds. So that would have been an extra 200 pounds and additional uh, 170 pounds for a modular power supply as well. So it didn't really feel worthwhile because the performance uplift comparing a 4070 Ti Super to a 4080 is a bit too small to justify that uh, additional spend. And if I'm gonna spend like a thousand pounds or over on a new graphics card and a power supply, then I might as well just wait for the 50 series, which I didn't wanna do. So performance wise, what would I say about the 4070 Ti Super compared with the 4070? I would say that the performance uplift is roughly 40 to 50% frame rate. In this case, we're talking about an extra 40, 40 frames per second, an extra 60 frames per second, depending on the game. It doesn't sound a lot, lot especially if you are someone who plays at 200 FPS or 300 FPS. It seems, you know, like a bit silly that I'm just talking about a small increase of 40 frames, but it makes a difference if you're under 60 frames per second and you get an uplift of 30 frames. It makes a big difference. And likewise, if you're at 70 frames per second and the performance uplift is to 120, 
that makes a big difference as well. So I feel like I have the headroom that I expected with some games like Cyberpunk, I can play with ray tracing, whereby previously I was playing Cyberpunk at um, the, not ultra settings, but a little bit step below, like between high and ultra, I would be around uh, 70 frames per second or 65. But if I switch on ray tracing, it would dip to maybe 45 or 50 or something like that, depending on the seconds, um, on the settings. But with the new graphics card, I am comfortably above 60 for almost all games, except for the really hardcore ones like Alan Wake 2. And I'm sure if I play Avatar, Fr Frontiers of Pandora, I would not be acing every single second. But for, for the majority of games that I want to play, like Ratchet and Clank, I'm at 80 frames per second, 90 frames per second. It's really good. And I feel like this is now comfortably a uh, 4K gaming PC. Noise-wise, there haven't been that much difference. I love the previous graphics card I had. It was quite compact. So if you're building an ITX PC, I highly recommend it. The thickness is similar to this one, probably a little bit thicker. It's about two slots and two fans but it looked a little bit puny. I didn't like the way it looked in my PC. It was a bit dwarfed by my cooler. And uh, yeah, aesthetics do matter a little bit. So I was also <laughs> really keen to upgrade because I wanted a PC that looked powerful. In here, it's nicer to have a uh, three fan graphics card because it just fills up the, you know, uh, like the entire length of the cavity here, but luckily there's still a bit of space in case I ever want to install water cooling and have the block and the radiator basically at the front. But it looks a lot better now and I love taking off the glass and admiring the look of the internals. I do dislike this LED there because it requires a, se a separate software that sometimes starts up, sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, the dragon theme doesn't really fit with the look and feel of my computer. I prefer capybaras, but I like the way it looks. Really, really like it. Thick, meaty, powerful. It's been undervolted along with the CPU as well. And now I don't have any games on. And actually the fans are not even spinning. They're not even spinning. So it's not a GPU that runs hot. Most games that I play, the GPU rarely goes above 60 degrees Celsius. The cooler itself for the PC, it's PC, for the CPU. The CPU temperature when I'm idling is like 37 and bear in mind in the house now is 25 degrees. It's summer, but over winter it idles at roughly the same temperature like 33 degrees with the glass panel on and when I'm playing games the 5800 X3D runs quite cool so that's usually around 52 bear in mind that this is at 4k it's not even at 1080p it's 4k so it runs quite well and I usually keep the glass on and the PC is pretty quiet and I don't hear it from the couch I sit roughly three meters away and when I'm just browsing it's borderline silent and the fan curve is now set to be basically under the fans are set to be at maximum 30 percent of their rpm if the cpu is below uh 50 degrees so it rarely spools up like even when I'm playing games except for the most really demanding ones, usually like the CPU is really above 50. So temperature wise, it feels like everything is under control. The GPU, CPU, the amount of fans, it all works quite well. And that brings me to the conclusion, should you buy the 4070 Ti Super or the 4070? If you're playing 4K, I think it's worthwhile, especially because of the RAM. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is similar 
to the 4080. So that's also one of the reasons why I purchased this one because it gives you the RAM capacity of the 4080 but at a significantly lower price and that offers a bit of headroom. I wouldn't say future proofing but it does offer some headroom for more demanding 4K games and also with things such as DLSS and frame gen they do consume a lot of RAM capacity and that is where it is really beneficial to have 16 gigabytes instead of 12 gigabytes. So that is my conclusion. Both cards are great. Obviously the 4070 is a lot cheaper now and if you're looking for an ITX build or you're happy to play at 60 frames per second and not use ray tracing at all then I think that's adequate. But if you want to use a bit of ray tracing or you want to have headroom for future games, I recommend the 4070 Ti Super. I managed to sell my old card through CEX for around 380 pounds. And that is the beauty of PC gaming. It's all modular. You can take parts out, sell them. So that was also another reason why I felt a bit tempted to upgrade because I can sell my old card at an okayish price now rather than um, do so next year when the resale value of the 4070 etc might have dropped. If you have any question let me know in the comments. Bye bye!